So what comes next for the front yard? Well, number one, hopefully you aren't tired yet of seeing the front garden. I always ask you that, but it's because we've been spending so much time here until the back gets finished. But as you guys know, it is a different garden every single day. All of our gardens, when you walk out, Wednesday is going to be different than it was Tuesday, and tomorrow will be different than it is today. And that's the importance of doing regular walkabouts, I think, is because you notice things when you are out here with regularity. And I'm gonna point some of those things out, some of the things that are on my garden task list for today and the next few days. And let's start over here, Stuart. So one thing that I am, am observing, and actually quite, quite happily, and that is, I have to say that I am stunned with how well things have grown in. I fully anticipated that at this point, I would already have a lot of plants that were on the way out. <laughs> and Not very the surprisingly, <laughs> they're all doing remarkably well. I think part of that is because, as I was talking about earlier, they're in their environment. In other words, most of these things wanted to be in practically full sun and historically I've only grown them in areas that were in partial shade and the environment wasn't pure to what they wanted. So Stuart, let's start out over here yep. with all of this <laughs> wonderful butterfly candy. Sometimes I call it candy butterfly. I, I, I am a little bit garden dyslexic. But, I mean, look at, all, look at all those bees. I mean, they are just going crazy, oh, especially the around the hydrangeas. Yeah. I mean, there's just a ton of them. In fact, for a while I thought they were great big flies, but no, they are indeed <laughs> bees. They are indeed bees, so the pollinators are very happy. So, uh, but I digress. Let's get back to the topic at hand. <laughs> Things have filled in so much, the butterfly candy has far exceeded my expectations as a ground cover and in fact has gotten far larger far more rapidly than I anticipated to the point where I'm going to be able to steal from Peter to pay Paul and move some of these around. Now am I going to do this now? Oh heavens no. Because even though we might get a little bit of a shower today, please Lord give us some rain. Um, I am noticing now what needs to be done. So if you look at the front portion of this terrace right here, on the west side, you'll see that things are starting to look really, really crowded. In fact, Stuart, if you could carefully walk down to the lower terrace so we could shoot up this way. I got it, don't be worried. Don't be worried, but you're walking backwards, so yep. that always worries me. <laughs> um, I am a worry wart. You can see that th this is looking kind of congested right here. Full and pretty, but nevertheless pretty congested. And there isn't enough negative space around the things in the foreground, I think, to do them justice. So what I'm going to do this fall I keep having one hair that keeps wanting to go in my mouth. Um, what I'm going to do this fall is I'm going to relocate some of the white butterfly candy. So I think, at first I thought, oh, I need to move this one. And then I looked and I thought, oh, I really need to move that one. And now I'm looking and I'm thinking, okay, maybe I need to move this entire triad, one, two, Three, definitely they need to be deadheaded, but I think they also need to be relocated so that the things in the foreground have their place to shine a little bit. And here's an example of that. I told you that I am just been kind of nutso. So question, there's two different colors here? Yeah, there's two different colors. Okay. There's this That's lavender one. Making sure one wasn't and like a different white. stage of the other. Yeah. yeah, no, but one, two, three. I think these are all going to be relocated. Now, where? I'm not 100% sure, but I have a couple, <laughs> I have a couple of ideas, uh, and I will show those to you. One option would be, since I'm close to it, one option would be to take three of these and come over in here 
and kind of fill in this void right in here. Yeah, that's true. Which would mean that when those annuals are gone, then I could fill this in in here. And someone else, one of you guys, followers, made the brilliant suggestion that I have another clump, and I'd actually already thought about it, that I have another clump of this Dusty Miller right here to kind of ground this corner. And I think I'll probably do that as well. Um, typically, I can get Dusty Miller to overwinter here in zone 7A, 7B, uh, at 7A, 7B, and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try that because I just love how full they are because I keep pinching them back. Again, this started out as just one tiny. I think maybe at the most it was a four-inch plant, and this one I started just. Oh, experimenting on continually pinching it back, and indeed it did what I hoped it would do, and that's turned into what looks like a small gray bush. I Would I like to have lavender up here? Yes, but it's just not as reliable as this is, and this gives me that punch of gray that I want. And you can see these over here, these two clumps are starting to fill out and get really large as I continue. I did not realize how different both sides of the leaf of the foliage is. Yeah, it's really, it's just frosty on top and kind of green below, or it just, I think it it's just- dusty gets, it's, it's dusty on top. It is dusty on top. Oh, on Stuart, top. you're, aren't you the clever one? <laughs> aren't you the clever one? So pretty soon, <laughs> I am hoping that these clumps catch up with this one. And then, because you guys know, Whenever possible, I steal from Peter to pay Paul. And in my window box, I have some Dusty Miller. Can you see it from here? No, you cannot, <laughs> because it is very, very crowded out. So it may be that I steal those Dusty Miller to plant over here as, as my gray clump to kind of ground this ground to this area. And then I do think I want to add a couple more white weddings down in here. So this area just looks a little bit unfinished to me. And I need to, it's almost mowing day, so I need to define this edge a little bit more. And then this will look like it's not truncated and just kind of stops. It will look as full and lush as the remainder. So that's my question of the day. Do you think I need to relocate these guys and give the other stuff a little bit more breathing room? Because I think I do. Another option for moving them would be back kind of right in front of, because remember, I am going to lose those posts eventually. So what are you, it, what are you talking about again? Okay, so the posts that are supporting the redbud tree. Yeah. And typically, you know, you keep them on for a year. I may push the envelope a little bit and take them out this <laughs> fall. Um, but right there about where the front post is, I might plant some of these uh, butterfly candy in there because there's kind of a negative sp space there. It's not that negative space is bad and that I want to fill every blank area, but it does provide living mulch and it makes the whole area look a little bit just more lush and less as if some of these areas have just been forgotten. So I'm going to take the time today to do lots of deadheading. Stuart, come over here and I'll show you. I just love how plants are your paint. Yeah. Just yes. like how light is yes. my paint. Yes, I'm, I'm just such the artiste. Uh, it, you are. I mean, it's 100% what you're doing. You're, you're using Painting plants as paint. Painting with plants. I paint with light, you paint with plants. I paint with plants. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do to give you an idea of what I'm talking about is, is I'm just going and Butterfly candy, by the way, is one of those, those shrubs that, that appreciates being cut back hard in early spring. But I am going to do another experiment. These are so vigorous that I really don't think I can damage them. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go ahead and start pruning out some stuff and cutting it back in the foreground 
so that I get a glimpse of what it will look like when this is not so dense. And I'm not, I'm not being really careful about clipping right above a leaf node or anything. My intention is to just give this area a little bit more breathing room. And you said you didn't think you could hurt it because of how like lush it's it just is. Tu it's yeah. just, it's tough and it's happy. Okay, yeah. Let's put it that way. If it were struggling or, you know, if it were struggling that much, I might just take it out. Now, sure. so right in here, it breaks my heart because see these are all new and, and about to come into bloom. So what I may do is just take it off way at the bottom and bring that in and use it as some cut flower material. Oh, I didn't realize how cool these look up close. I'm gonna show everybody. Yeah, blue. they're very. They've got these fabulous conical it's blooms. Three colors in there, or I guess you know, white. Well, they come. Yeah, they come in all different ones. And I have to say yeah. that I, I'm kind of surprised. I love them all, but the white is probably my least favorite because I, I just don't think it's quite as dramatic. Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's just, dare I say dull in comparison. It's well, not so dull. It's, <laughs> it's not dull, but it's, and in an all white garden, this, this would be spectacular, but you can kind of see what I'm, what I'm doing. Well, it is the theme over here. Okay. Right? So can, can you see here uh -oh, hold on. how by cutting this back, it opened it up. It really opened it up. Yeah, you can tell. And it lets things like the penta in the foreground have a little bit more space, more sun, and then it will bloom more profusely. When you get done, we'll show them from the front so we can okay. see it from there. But... So. Wow, there's bees on the hydrangeas. I know. So many bees. And they are bigger than they... normal. Well, I think they're just a different kind of bee. Okay, say, so see on. here, Stuart, see how this kind of opened this up? I shouldn't say there's bees and not show them, so I'm trying to show them now. Okay. So see how okay. this really opened up this area? I'm back. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a difference. It's, it's absolutely, yeah, oh, wow, there you, you go. There you the go. Now yeah. you can see when I move the basket. Well, we could hardly even see the, the dusty Yeah, you can, you can see the dusty miller. So now that will give the dusty miller more light, more air. Couldn't hardly see my old friend Dusty. To Dusty Springfield. We're dating ourselves, Stuart. Okay, I'm going to cut this back just a little bit more because I want to encourage this to do what that did and periodically if the leaves on the bottom are a little bit too big these are the ones that i take off and use in flower arrangements or different things and then while i'm down here that's another tip of my garden manifesto while you're down there go ahead and see what else needs to be done so are there weeds that need to be pulled um, I, i'm going to look for bugs. I'm going to see what else needs to be done while I am down here. So I'm just going to clip this a little bit more. And it may be, okay, I clip this and I decide, well, then they can continue to live here because now they have more space. That's true too. But it's just a matter of paying attention and thinking, okay, things are starting to look you know, I like a very tidy garden and things are starting to look a little bit unkempt. So now these penta in the foreground will have a lot more room and won't have so much competition from the butterfly candy. And I think it looks, I think it looks a little bit nicer. It now does. I can definitely do more work on that. Oh yeah. Looks and like down here you can really can see. Can you it. really tell? And then I'll deadhead it some more, but um, I want you, I wanted you guys to see, and this is also another thing in my garden manifesto, and that is don't let your plants boss you. It's so my, it's my if, favorite one on the if side. this plant is getting a little too thuggish, then by golly, I will discipline it and whip it into shape. Don't let your plants gang up on you either. Yes. Don't let them gang up on me. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. That is, that's kind of my thinking for this area right in here. I'm going to steal from Peter to pay Paul, perhaps move some stuff over there, finish that out and make, make it look like I, I just neglected it or that I ran out of design vigor once I got to that point. So something else I wanted to share with you that I'm just so happy about 
and that is I had grown Cleome in the past, these tall statuesque flowers, pink and white flowers over here. I have grown Cleome in the past, but again, never in its optimal situation. There was, there was always just too much shade encroaching and it wasn't in its, its uh, optimum environment. But now what I found, and here's another question of the day, tell me what you think, because what's so interesting about them is they keep putting on vertical growth and as soon as I think I need to deadhead them, they are just indomitable. They just keep blooming at the tip, on the top. So they keep getting taller, they keep going more vertical and it's like I almost don't have to deadhead them. So I also love it because there's this perfect color echo amongst the pink ones, kind of a lavendery pink, with the crazy pink echinacea. These are a southern living plant. These I just grew from seed from my friend Gail. I am going to start deadheading some of them because now I want them to kind of be growing at different heights. And you can see these here where these seeds germinated a little bit later. And because of that, they're not as large. I also find these seed heads, look at those, they're just fascinating. Oh wow, I didn't even notice that's what that was. Yes, okay, this is why they're called, this is called the spider flower, because of these spidery seed heads that project out from the vertical flower. Now I do know that this can be overly rambunctious in my garden, but again, I'm not gonna let my plants boss me. If they start really, the seed heads start drying and I don't want more of them in this area, then I will judiciously trim them off before they dry. Now, something else that I want to take into consideration is the fact that I might want more or less of one of the specific colors because you can see there's a light pink there's a white. Oh, I did not notice that. Those are both not white. Yeah, no. There's a light pink. There's kind of a lavendery purple. And yep. then there's a white. Hold that white and the light pink close. I want to see if I can okay. make, make sure they can see it because I didn't okay. see it at first. Yeah, there you can tell. Yeah, this is kind of a dusty ballerina pink. Definitely. So if I want to select one or the other color for a little bit more of it, then what I might do is put a tag or something on it and say, okay, this is the color that I want. So these are the seeds that I want to save in the event that I decide to cut it back. And what, if I cut it back, then I won't know what color it is anymore. So I may want to mark this plant down low so that I know that this is the color that I want to keep and I want to get more of. The other thing that I'm noticing is the celosia it germinated a little bit later, and the celosia is this. That was the reveal. Good job. <laughs> yes. The celosia is this, and it's a perfect color echo. One of Again, the coolest looking plants. Yeah. Yeah, a color echo will make a great dried flower in the fall. Perfect color echo to the crazy pinks. But it, it germinated more slowly, so it's catching up. And as I let it continue to grow, it will continue to get more vertical. And then again, there'll be another change the next day. Pretty soon, some of this will continue to grow and be more statuesque. And then it won't be like this Cleome is just on this cloud level all by itself. The Celosia will grow up and probably join join them at about that level. Another interesting thing is, you know, I, I just love white and I love white in the garden and I thought I would really like the white celosia better than the dark pink, but au contraire, I find it is a oh, little... Oh, there it is. I didn't even see it. Yeah. It's a little bit more, it's pretty, but it's a little bit more ho-hum to me. And This is the I, extent of what it'll do? Well, yeah. It's just kind of white. Now the flowers will get bigger. It almost doesn't distinguish itself from the green and the, and the leaf. Yeah, and the yeah. enough. So it would make a pretty cut flower and I can cut it, but also look at the difference. I was envisioning it to be more of a pure white. Well, yeah. Like that white in the indigo frost, and it's more of a yellowy white. 
So in actuality, I ended up, again, I was surprised, I shouldn't be so arrogant, that I really like this color better than I like the white. All right, Chris, quick question. How many other colors do they come in? Uh, oh, they come in red. They could probably come in a, a different different gradients of color. They come That's in white. Cool. There, there's all sorts of different kinds. It's also called coxcomb. And there's some that grow short. This is a tall variety. Um, I had some one year that was just a beautiful, beautiful pink that I got at Monticello. But uh, this all came from my friend Gail's garden and I wasn't sure exactly what it would look like. Um, the other thing that I want to point out over here is I planted my larkspur very late. I typically want to plant my larkspur in the fall so that it blooms earlier in the spring. This year, I threw some out late, and you'll see that it is germinating. Oh, I was looking for it. I was like, where is it? I don't have any clue where And it it's coming up <coughs> right Excuse there, me. but it's very small, and you, it's really not making much of a presence. I see some weeds down there that I need to attack. There's some over here too, Stuart. Right. right here. Okay, yeah. See right there? See how tiny it is? Reminds and it, it's blooming, but it's blooming in a rather um, understated way. And so is I'm, that a ground cover? No, it's okay. a it's it, it's a annual that goes to seed and okay. it comes back. It's kind of a form of delphinium. The other thing that I planted late that I'm in the past I also planted in the fall. It kind of goes to seed. Normally, in my other garden, it would be completely done by now. In fact, I drove by the other house the other day, and there was a lot of it that was drying and, and, and gone to seed because it had already been finished. Mine, and I'm going to do this again next year, because I planted it so late in the spring and not in the fall, it's just now starting to bloom. So it is joining the party, and the composition is really changing. So, for example, it's also growing a little bit shorter. But, Stuart, if you can walk along this front terrace edge, you can see there's some of it coming into bloom right here. And that is Minoan lace. It came from my friend Christy, and it is a beautiful seed. And if you look over in there, Stuart, can you see some of it hiding? Yeah, you might have to Vanna White it. Okay, <laughs> Vanna White it. Can you see it right here? Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, so it's coming up and it's adjoining this party in here and it's blooming later and in the summer rather than spring and I think I like that. So that tells me then it's something I need to record in my garden journal and that is that I want to plant this in the spring or at least plant some of the seed in the spring and not all of it in the fall. I cut back this gara really hard and it's taking its time to put out a second flush of bloom, but look how much larger the stand of it is. And when it starts to bloom, it will really be gorgeous in the foreground of this whole pollinator area, this fluttering, hovering area, which has lots of hoverers. If I say it feels like we're in a bee sanctuary. <laughs> I know, it kind of does. And it's really cool to be in the middle of that and have no fear of anything being bit or Yeah, just I just, they, I ignore them and they ignore me. Yep. Now, the other thing that I want to do, if I'm going to put a bunch of Dusty Miller to ground that corner, then I probably want to do it on this corner as well. And thankfully, I've got different areas that I can steal from to be able to do that. Now, I do have some bad news. Uh -oh. So my bad news is, first the good news, <laughs> all of this stuff is doing great. But look right here. This Catoni ester is just not happy. Look at all of the brown, the browning leaves. Oh wow, I would have thought it was a miniature Nandina or something for a second. And <laughs> this is a Catoni ester. This is not part of the Southern Living Plant Collection. And I think it's unhappy. I was, I was unsure 
first of all, whether it was unhappy because it was getting too little or too much water. And I have determined, I think, that it was getting too little water. So how did I determine that? Well, come up here, Stuart, and I'll yep. show you. Now, even when leaves start to go brown, it does take them a while to get crispy so that you can slough them off. Now, I could come in here and do lots of cutting, um, but that's a lot of work. I'm probably just going to kind of leave it as it is. They will get dry and crispy, and then I'll just go like this, and they'll fall off, and I'll clean them up. But I, since I was wondering, is it getting too much or too little water, I guessed that it, would pro it was probably too little water. So I really started giving it a lot more TLC. I heard, and, I heard sprinklers come on. Uh, yeah. I thought for sure it was about to get us wet, sorry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. Um, so, I, so I gave it more water and sure enough, if you look, look at the new growth. Don't look at my, my manicure that, okay, how bad is that? I'm, right, I'm right. embarrassed. We're talk about it, we gotta show I know, it. we have to show how bad is that? And <laughs> I am getting a manicure this afternoon. Um, so, but so I started looking, but you can see this is a better example right here, Stuart. See that light green leaf right there? Yep. Okay, that's new foliage. On the stem with the, On dead, the, stem leaves. With the dead leaves. See that new fresh growth? So that tells me I don't need to rip this plant out. Oh, that's cool. It is okay. It will survive. I may need to adjust a sprinkler head and be more attentive to giving it a little bit more water. But indeed, it is still alive. The other thing that I noticed is that these roses weren't looking like they were dying or anything, but I think these roses could get a little bit more water too on this edge. So that's something that I will take into account. I'm overly cautious on these sidewalks out here due to all my near collisions with with, the traffic on your sidewalk. It's traffic, I know. There's so many kids and scooters and all sorts of things. So that is something to, to kind of be aware of and be mindful of because you see the other two Cotone esters there, they are just fine. They're happy. This one I just noticed was struggling as was this. Here's another example, Stuart. You might be able to shoot that from down there. But there's a kaleidoscope abelia oh, right I here. Can see it, yeah. Okay, it should look like that. Like but this. instead, it looks like this. It's a little different. But before I ripped it out, I again gave it a little bit more TLC, some more water, and indeed, it too is putting out little green growth. Little green growth. I think you can see them from here. Actually. You can. Yeah. Okay, you can see. It's kind of more vibrant. Yeah, I think if I'm not mistaken, you can see it, which is kind of Right cool. there, yeah. So it, it was not really sincerely dead. It was just faking it. So I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> I am gonna give it a little bit more TLC. It's playing possum. And I think it will come out and it will be, and it will be fine. So that's that for the bad news, which wasn't that bad. <laughs> It was discouraging, but it wasn't that bad. I do need to come in and deadhead these roses. Now, what's bothering me about this area right now? Well, what's bothering me is in my imagination, um, I kind of, you know, had, had, had offered up my vision to the gardening gods and as yet, it has not materialized. <laughs> I want these to really, this whole area to be filled and cascading and really, really beautiful. And it's not yet, but it will be. I have faith. It just, it just needs to grow and mature and Linda needs to be more patient. Yes, that is probably the answer. Yes. Um, one thing I am going to do Stuart, maybe you will help me with it, is I am going to try, and I think some of you may have suggested it, I can't remember, but I'm thinking about switching out the pineapple finials, or whatever they are, pine cone, pineapple, and place them here, 
and place these pots up there because I feel like I might need a little bit more color and profusion. It's awful right, green and gray up right there. Right in there, yeah. And so, I, so I'm thinking about that. Looks nice though. Yeah. Okay, something else. It's, and it, you know, and a lot of times it's not so much that things don't look nice, it's that I wonder if they can look better. Yeah, we, yeah I know, I figured that Because I'm out. always improving. Yep. Now, I think not just my, but I think a lot of one of our favorite things this year has been that boxwood basil, Stuart. Yeah, no, it's wow, it's even bigger than it was the I last know, time it I just, saw. and you can tell it's about to flower. So, uh, I love the way, is it bolting? Is that what that is? Well, it, yes, it's going to flower. So, what I'll probably do is I might come in here and shear it before it flowers so that it will continue to put out leafy growth. It looks so pretty. But it would though. be very pretty and white. So, I might let one of them go ahead and bloom. Because that's really cool. Looking. And I would definitely go ahead and plant more of it right now, but I can't find my seed. I actually ordered some more and we'll put the link to the boxwood seed. It does take a while to arrive. Now, because I love this so much, I thought, oh, I wonder if there's a purple version. Ooh, now here's the, is anybody, if I ask this question, is it, it's basil, so is it herbs you can yeah, cook with, all yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. That's, I'd love, to, picking from that, like on yeah. the window sill, would it's be not awesome. The, it's not the traditional yeah. form that you would use to make pesto or something out of it, that sweet Genevieve, but, and this is so cute, yeah, no, but, it's really cool. I mean, but, I so could, I looked, and there is something, and I ordered some of the seed, there's something called purple ball basil. Now, will it have quite the uniformity and perfect spherical shape of this? I don't know, but it's a gardening risk worth taking. So I I, I got some seed, and, and if it arrives pretty soon, it will not be too late to plant it, and how gorgeous would that be in the fall? So that is something that I have to look forward to during the heat. And Stuart, it makes me sad, but it looks like these clouds are clearing up. I know, up. I was just thinking the same thing. Okay, another development. I decided that the boxwood here really was sincerely dead. Oh. Really most sincerely dead. Was that from the other house? Uh, it was one of them from the other house. So was that one. That one was happy, this one wasn't. So I pulled it out. From a distance, you can't even really tell that it's gone. No, I couldn't notice um, that And I'll probably wait until it's cooler and I'll add another one right there. Um, so that's okay. My window box, I've talked about it before, but because it's doing so brilliantly, <laughs> I will talk about it again because I just think it is so fun. Tomatoes. It is just so oh, that fun. that cool color gradient on and, the tomatoes. And I, I would have more of those tomatoes, but somebody, Stuart. I've had a couple. Has been eating them. <laughs> um, we were doing some shooting last night and Stuart kept gnawing on them. Snacks, so man. that's kind of fun. And then if they get too rambunctious, then I just cut them back. But look, I've got all sorts of tomatoes here. Oh, and there's even pepper still on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's pepper. Can you see the I peppers? See one over there. Yeah. yeah. I need to get another harvest. Um, and won't it be fun when these tomatoes come out and they're kind of cascading over here? And I haven't been. I haven't mentioned it enough, but this is that fabulous Chef's Choice oh, rosemary yeah. from Southern Living. I haven't seen it in a while. And it has been so happy here. So, so happy. There's one on this end and there's one on the other end. Um, and, I, and you can see now the benefits of my continually pinching back the pineapple guava because look at, look at how much more dense it's becoming. Just and such all a cool, of the new growth. Kind of gray green to yeah. break up all the other And I green. love that color. Okay, now see up here. What this do you call that color? Gray green's not right. Gray, uh, silvery green. <laughs> silvery okay, green. so look here. Here, here is this Dusty Miller that's hiding in here, and I, I need to rescue it from the profusion of stuff that's growing in here. So I will probably dig it out. Is that, do I see a little Dusty Miller? Yep, piece there's sticking another out over one. There? Yep, there's another one over there. And I see it. Okay, now interestingly. I got two different varieties of scaviola. This variety that's more of a periwinkle color, 
It didn't have the name of the variety on it. It has just done beautifully as has this. So I think it's the same variety. There was another form that I planted in those urns that was a darker purple and not as cascading. And it really is not happy. And so I just have kind of cut it back and pulled it out. But this stuff looks great and I love the abundance of color. I wasn't sure how I would like this color combo, but I have to say, I do love it. And you naysayers that said, oh, this looks awful. <laughs> uh, it has kind of come to my vision. It still looks a little bit overgrown and wild, but I'm okay with that. And look at that asparagus fern. And boy, is it handling this sun. I wasn't sure about that either. We've had multiple days over 100 degrees, and this seems to just be fine and go with it. I do need to do lots of deadheading. Lots of deadheading on the lantana. Um, let me think what else. Okay, one thing I need to trim up. You say deadhead, it always takes me to the Grateful Dead. The Grateful of, Dead, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so this, these are the little things. This is what comes next, just more tending. This variegated lemon thyme, Another which cool is just plant. incredible. I need to kind of trim it back. I love the so super, super fast or super highly repeated pattern. Yes, yes, neat. of all these, uh, little guys. all these rounded forms. Uh, the Eugenia continues to just amaze me and be just fabulous. You can see a lot of the salvia that I've cut back. It's already starting to put out new growth and bloom again. There's a little sweet one. Lots of deadheading to do on the Budlia. Welcome to Linda's Bee Sanctuary. Yes, my bee sanctuary. There has to be at least oh, and 100 this, out here. And this I did, I have not showed you. These guys are joining the party in a happy, happy way. Oh, wow. These zinnias. Oh, so, is this an old bloom here? Yeah, that, I know. So I saw that. Who yeah, knows? Someone, and I can't remember if that's Ann or Jane, but it's either Ann or Jane, <laughs> Star Magnolia, and, and it keeps putting out some little blooms. And then, let me but, show them these other ones up close. Yeah, but look them. at the, those zinnias which they're a common plant, I know, but they are uncommon in their execution and use because look at how it repeats the color. There's even some flocks right there and there's flocks over in the distance. I'm gonna have to wait for the cloud of bees to clear so they can see the plants. Yeah, and, and it will, <laughs> yeah, really. But they're just, it's just beautiful. And this tells me that next year I will want to have more of those zinnias over on this side and there's not because they're getting enough air circulation and because I'm not watering overhead there's not a hint of powdery mildew. I've got weeding to do over here and I'll get on that in short order but as long as I'm down here I'll go ahead and do some of it. Here's some more Minoan lace coming up and this penstemon needs some deadheading. Now the other thing that I'm doing is I am still cutting back the asters. So you'll recall that I had a bunch of asters that I also transplanted from my friend Gail's. And they have done brilliantly, but see how they're already getting tall and starting to bloom and yep. I don't want them to bloom yet. So I'm really whacking them back hard and it looks like they're a little bit buggy. So I'll come in here and I will spray with some neem oil or something to control that. Here's one of the Blue Point junipers that I brought from the house. And I'll probably start shaping it pretty soon. Can you see it oh, right I, there, Oh, let me Stuart? get over there. Yeah, I thought I could, and then I realized what you were doing. And I that blue-gray. The little Christmas trees. Yes, the little Christmas trees, a lot of which are still in pots. And boy, I mean, this for the most part, this stuff is coming out pretty easily. I get down here, and I can't resist. That's why my, ma my uh, manicure is just shot. Well, we know what's important to you. It is important to me. 
I have my priorities. So that's kind of what's coming up next. It's just paying attention to what's going on. And I know somebody's going to say, why are you using those scissors? Well, because they're dollar scissors. I have a bunch of them. Because she's been using those scissors for like 30 years now. Yeah, I've been using, using them for 30 scissors. years. And I don't have, <laughs> I don't have my hoary hoary knife, which is my preferred <laughs> weeding tool of choice. And because I'm down here, I'm being opportunistic. When I see it, I, I address it. Boy, there's lots of larkspur over here. So every day, every day is just a new day. And it's why my neighbors probably think I'm crazy because I'm just out here bending over, looking there's, at things. There's a lot of worse ways somebody's crazy could go. <laughs> yeah. The, <laughs> this is a pretty cool way for your crazy to go. Yeah. If, <laughs> if, if this is crazy, then give me more of it. So Stuart, I guess that's a nice place to end. There if, we go. The, if this is crazy, then I am a happily mad woman. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Hopefully you're not tired of the little cottage garden on the hill, but I do, and we need to start shooting it from different angles, Stuart, because we start, yeah, we're kind of every angle, them. this is the angle I get from the front patio. Out and, the window sometimes, get yep, that shot. And it's really, really, really beautiful. We need to do, you know what we need to do next, Stuart? We need to do a flat lay of these annuals so people can see what a exactly brilliant, what's there. yeah, exactly what's there, name them, I can do that. and a brilliant color palette. So, she's still weeding y'all. She said I know, she was done. I know, but, I said, but I'm not, I'm not, what can I say? I am possessed. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Happy Wednesday. Walk about. Uh, you guys get out in your garden and quit listening to me. See you later. <laughs>